Got ourselves a cycle sill bore master, made in Clearwater, Florida. I estimate this machine to be around 1980. Uh, I've seen different versions. There's not a whole lot of info on them, but if you don't have the caliper that comes with the machine, you don't have anything. Because what it does is measures your tool bit extension into a bore after you've centered it. Um, and I've learned on this one that you put your final dimension in here. Say, uh, for example, this bore that I'm doing now is 2.580 in inches. Of course, everything's metric, and you've got to convert it to standard. That's my final dimension after a 3,000th clearance of honing. The way this is set up now, it allows for that honing. So I wrote on here to remember that in paint marker, because I use this thing probably five times a year, maybe. But we got a crazy project today. A uh, guy brought a CB750 cylinder head in. And when I got it, the uh, standard bore measured 2.399 inches, or 2.4. What we need, because the pistons they're going to use, and they say standard on them too, this is crazy, is 2.580. Hey, that's a lot. That's so this is the first step to boring any hole on this machine, is make sure everything is clean. This is the surface that it uses for reference. So also keep in mind when you put a cylinder head on here that if it's got any gasket in the way, any trash, any speck of dust will make this thing off and you'll bore a hole sideways or crooked or at an angle not parallel to the gasket surface. I'm not sure if these came with the machine or they look like yours, but this is what I've got and we'll take that place it here. And I made these wood, these are oak, as hard as wood as I could find. And I've got different steps for different heights. And we'll start getting it rigged here. Again, make sure this is flat to this surface. Put our centering cone in there, get it started. Let's bring the quill down. If you've got to run the quill down a long ways, you can hold the knob or use the peg and lock it to the outer hole like that and run it down until it gets close. Keep your finger on that switch because when it gets close to that cylinder, we're going to turn it off. Of course, you could crank it down also, but after doing a few of these a day, you learn to use the machine as much as possible. Let our fingers go. Put a little tension on here and loosen our clamps. Keep going until this thing quits moving. So we're roughly center now. We're gonna re-tighten this. Make sure everything's parallel. Loosen that. I like to back this nut up as far as it'll go and use it like a slide hammer to get out of here. Then we can bring our quill up. So here's the grind I like to use on my cylinders. And it's a little unorthodox. But what helps is making a larger radius here. Because of the way this thing cuts, it moves pretty quickly. You need a round, smooth finish per pass. So it's got a slight back rake here. In relief. So we take our 5 16 bit and place it in the cutting direction so the shaft runs this way. So our cutting surface is in the center of the post. And then I'll use a shim behind that 5 16 bit. Let's get our indicator in the right position. So we know that we're starting out at 2 point four as the zero comes around we'll be at 2.4 let's go ahead and back off to five thousandths and tighten the sucker in because I don't trust that centering cone for this large of a job if it was a single cylinder bike and you're in a super hurry you might get away with just the cone but let's see how close we are with the cone right now so we add that 5,000, so I'm manually bringing down the tool, and we're touching there. 
at five thousandths. Uh, so let's center where that has cut, loosen the clamps a little bit, take our hammer and hit on the opposite side of the cylinder. We need to move it towards where it's cutting. One little tap, clamp it down and check. I've yet to find a dial indicator or a way to set up that I can get this exactly center. I'm sure some of you Bridgeport mill guys are in Larger equipment guys are cringing here, but remember we're honing the last three thousandths and with this particular bore, we're taking out a huge chunk. Um, if we were only doing one oversize, I would take a lot of time setting this up to where I was absolutely sure that we weren't changing any of the wall distance. Okay, so let's get to cutting. I'm just gonna run this through uh, as it is now, make sure there's no problems. So we're gonna get to where it just about touches the bore there and we're gonna use the inner hole and lock it in and then go down. Another thing about this machine is it'll chatter sometimes. And all you gotta do is turn it off for a second and let the speed change. You hear that? little noise right when that starts I turn it off and then go again you may not do it again but when you first start it tends to want to shatter and if you get shattered early on you're gonna have shattered all the way through well we're good we're gonna walk away and let the limit switch stop it at the bottom of the cylinder so that was a success we ran a test pattern through there and it touched all the walls we're gonna put to our original diameter 240 let's go 2405 we've got let's cut about 30 thousandths past so 240 2435 let's loosen our screws and push the tool bit into the caliper and tighten it back down And I'll show you the function of this. It's called here, limit switch release. If you didn't have this propped up on uh, one, two, three blocks or something where it has a nice follow through, you can hit this button and cut the last little bit. Like, okay, watch. I'm gonna hit this button and listen for it cutting. It stopped cutting, so I'll release the switch. So here's what you're looking for for the next step. This is the piston we measured and this is the bore cut with that measurement being the final diameter. And earlier I stated that it includes for honing, which is exactly what we've got here. Piston starts and stops at the skirt. We know we've hit the right size because the next three thousandths will clear the skirt and be our finished diameter. So next to the honing process. Just about done on this one. We got all four board. And I ran a hone through there, a 180 grit hone. About six passes, I figure, well the way it works out for me is you get it snug and run through and do that twice and that's about a thousandth. So here we are with our oversized piston and just a little bit of drag on the skirt. That's perfect. This one's still a little tight. I'm gonna run the hone through there again. So I hope this helps some of y'all, especially if you have a cycle sill boring bar. When I first got that thing, man, I just had to learn because no one uh, no one had videos on it. So, hey, if you got one, congratulations, and hopefully you can make the money. I charge $50 a hole, so $200 in an afternoon. Thanks for watching.